Hi YouTube and welcome back to the channel. In this week's video we're going to continue our journey looking at Snowflake Cortex and specifically looking at the ML functions. Last time out we looked at the anomaly detection model and if you want to see that demo I'll put a link up in the screen now if we do that. This week though we're looking at the forecasting, time series forecasting specifically and the new ML model that comes with Snowflake Cortex. But firstly, what is forecasting? Well, it's looking at historical data and applying machine learning algorithms to that historical data to predict what's going to happen in the future. Now, this is great for things like financial forecasting or sales forecasting. We can take a look at historical data, look at trends, look at patterns over time, and then project that forwards. And the primary goal of forecasting is to really provide data-driven insights. So looking at historical data, looking at those patterns, to predict how many sales you're gonna make in the future or what your financial risk model or profile may look like going forwards. Now imagine if you're able to predict future sales, it can really help retail organizations in terms of what stock they need to put in place, what stores need that based upon various other factors like weather, public holidays, seasonality, and so on. In the financial sector, it can predict market trends, helping to aid in investment strategies. One other aspect which is really useful is that you can provide future data based upon different scenarios and feed that into a ML forecasting model in Snowflake, and that will show you, based upon those factors that you're feeding it, what your sales or what your financial target values may look like going forwards. And those what if scenarios are really, really useful for modeling and predicting what future scenarios might come up. As with the anomaly detection model that we looked at last time out, we need two values to provide a forecaster model with. One is a timestamp column, and that needs to have a fixed frequency, so daily, weekly, monthly, for example, along with a target column. What do you wanna predict? Is that sales? Is that financial income? Is that stock on hand? Optionally then, you can provide something called exogenous variables. These are additional data points such as temperature, humidity, public holidays, which you think may influence that target value that you want to look at and forecast going forwards. You can optionally include those and Snowflake Cortex forecast and ML models can take those things into account and look at how that might influence future forecasts and values going forwards. Once you've identified those data points within your historical data, you can feed that into a Cortex ML forecaster model to build and train the model. Then you can use single series or multi-series data. And remember, a single series can represent sales for one store. And with multi-series data, you can feed the model data for multiple stores as long as you've got an identifier in there. And the model can actually forecast each series separately based upon that store identifier. Once that model is built and trained using historical data, you can then make future forecasts. And that involves specifying the number of time increments going forwards or providing additional exogenous variables if you decide to use them. So with that out of the way, let's get into Snowflake and let's take a look with a real demo of how this all works. Okay, so here we are on Snowflake and we're gonna cover a few examples that demonstrate using time series forecasting for different use cases. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a sales database to store our tables and data and models within it. We're then gonna create a sales data table. Now in here, we've got a store identifier, an item, a date timestamp, the number of sales, and then we've got a bunch of additional variables temperature, humidity, and holiday, which we're gonna use in a later example in this demo. So let's create that table and let's populate it. Now don't forget, if you wanna follow along yourself, you can get hold of all of this code directly on the Snowflake documentation website under ML functions under forecasting. Next up, we're gonna create or replace a table called future features. This is what we're gonna use a little later in our demo. So we're just setting it up now to get our housekeeping out of the way and we're gonna insert some data in there. Notice that it's exactly the same with the store, identifier, the item, the timestamp, and then the extra variables we're gonna use a little later. So our first example uses a single time series. So that means all the rows are part of a single series. It has two columns, so it needs two columns, and needs a timestamp, and it needs a target value column. So first up, we're gonna prepare the data set using the sales data to train the model. So we're gonna create this view called V1, and notice that we're selecting 
everything from store ID one where the item is a jacket. So let's just have a look at what that looks like in our view. Notice that we're not including the additional variables at the stage. We're literally just pulling out a date and the number of sales. Notice that the way we set this up is our sales increment um, by one every single day. So they start at two on the 1st of January, 2020, and they go up by one in a linear fashion every single day. Okay, so this is obviously a small um, data set, and the reason why it's set up like this is so when we're forecasting in the future using this, it's quite easy to see how it all works behind the scenes. Now, the following statement here for model one, this is gonna train a forecasting model using the data set V1 we've just created. So we've got create Snowflake ML forecast model one. We give it our input data, which is our view, but it could also be a table. It needs then a timestamp column name, which is date and a target name. So what we're looking to predict. So let's execute that. And that'll take a few seconds to run. Once that's run, we will get a model one successfully created statement in a moment. This means now that the forecast model is now available as model one, we can call it like this using the following command, call model one, explanation mark, forecast. And we're adding this forecasting underscore periods to forecast the next three timestamps. So let's execute that and see what it comes up with. And here we can see for our 13th, 14th, and 15th of January, 2020, we've got a forecast of 14, 14.5, and 15.75. Now, if we go back up to our data, notice that the last increment was on the 12th, and that was 13 sales. So it's predicting it's gonna go up by one, which follows the pattern as we expect. The next one, it doesn't necessarily go to 15, it goes to 14.5. Notice we've got a lower and upper bound here, so basically it's predicting it can fall within this range and forecasting a figure within this range. And then we've got 15.75, so again, a little bit less. If it was following the pattern, we'd have 14, 15, 16. But crucially, we've got our three timestamps for our forecasting periods that we specified here. Now, interestingly, in the Snowflake documentation, it suggests that the model would predict 14, 15, 16, as we would expect with the same values for lower and upper bound. But as you can see, it's slightly different here. And so let's try to customize the size of the prediction interval so we can pass a prediction interval parameter in as part of a configuration object. Now the prediction interval estimates a range of values within an upper and lower bound um, in which a certain percentage of data is likely to fall. So for example, a value of 0.95 means 95% of the data is likely to appear within that interval. Here we're specifying 0.8, so we're saying 80% of the data is likely to fall within the interval. We can add this value and parameter onto our model when we call it. So if we execute that again, let's see if that changes any of the output at all. Now for our forecasting figures, they remain exactly the same, but on a bigger data set, this is something that you're gonna to wanna to know about and be able to use to fine tune how we use the model and how we apply it to fit our data properly. Again, we saw this in our last video, the anomaly detection video. If you missed that, I'll stick a tag up in the corner so you can go and check out that video to see how that works. Finally, we're gonna save our results um, from the model. So just call in the free forecasting periods, grab in the last uh, SQL ID for the statement that we've run, assign in that to a variable called x and then executing this create table my forecasts and creating the table as a select star from the results for that particular sql id or query id if we execute that that will run the model create the table and populate it with the data that was returned from the model. So if I show you what that looks like, there's our free records as we saw a little earlier on. Next up, we're gonna move on to forecast a single series with exogenous variables. So that means essentially additional variables that we think may or may not influence the target value. In this case, it's gonna be holidays or weather, for example. And so we need to include these first of all in our training data. So we're gonna create another view, V2. This time we're gonna pull in temperature, humidity and holiday we're still gonna look at store ID one and the jacket items. If we look at the view, here's our data. We can see now we've got the additional three columns on the end of it. So in exactly the same way before, we're gonna um, train our model using that new view that we have. 
Notice that we don't necessarily need to specify now that we're using exogenous variables. We only still need to specify the timestamp and target name because it assumes that any additional columns in that data are gonna be additional variables that we're gonna look at. So this new model now is called model two. And if we wanna perform forecasting for future timestamps, we need to provide future values that also include the same variables that we've got in the model. So in this case, the temperature, humidity, and holiday. So this allows us to kind of answer those what if questions. So what if the temperatures were cooler than normal? How does that impact things going forwards? But just remind you, just back up the top here, we've got this future features table that we created at the top of the video. If we just quickly have a look at that data, we can see here we've got our temperature in there and our humidity. And this is great because you can then um, play with these values uh, amend them as you need to and look at different scenarios to predict future sales values. If we come back down um, to executing the model itself. So if we come back down to where we were before, we're gonna create a view V2 underscore forecast and we're gonna select the columns that we want from this future features table. Again, looking at store ID one and the item equal to jacket. So we're just preparing our data. Here it is in our view V2. So now we're gonna run our model with this forecast command here. We give it an input um, data set, which is our V2 forecast, because this is what we want to use to forecast our um, projections of sales. Here though, we don't need to specify a, um, an interval, a prediction interval like we did before, because it will work that out based upon the number of timestamps we're providing in the forecast, in the V2 forecast view. We do also need to tell it what is the timestamp column name. If we execute this, it gives us the next two timestamps, effectively the same number as what we passed into it. The forecast values are the same. So we're working with a really small data set. It's not gonna give us a huge amount of variation in terms of the results set that we're seeing, but hopefully the theory makes sense and how you would apply it in your own environment. So you too can use Snowflake Cortex and these ML functions that are now available to you and every Snowflake customer. Hope you find this useful. If you did, keep watching, keep subscribing. New videos coming soon.